Code Geass is my favorite anime. You probably gathered that much from the fact that I call myself Zero. One of the things that I love most about Code Geass is its brilliant, subtle storytelling. Plenty of other shows want to hammer every single second of content into your head and make sure you don't miss anything. But Code Geass isn't afraid to throw an image on screen for two seconds, or throw out a line that you probably won't understand the first time you see it. And that philosophy allows the viewer to come back and make new connections with each rewatch. Mao is a character whose relatively short appearances embody this idea for me, as he's someone that I've never put much thought into, despite how brilliant of a character he is to add to the story once you start to think about it. When Mao first meets Shirley, we learn that he's clearly deeply manipulative, and seems to know everything about her. We hear Shirley's internal monologue, and he finishes the sentence in her head. This implicitly informs us of his abilities, allowing us to figure it out for ourselves rather than having a character explain it to us, like many other shows would. Here the show takes advantage of a character having an easily recognizable power by organically weaving it into his dialogue and characterization. And then, just to top it off, at the end of the scene, we see the Gios sigil in his eye, finally cementing that he isn't just some guy who's been watching Shirley and knows what she's been up to, but he's someone who possesses a supernatural power, most logically mind-reading, who's set up to be a rival to Lelouch. The more we learn about Mao, the more he becomes a dark reflection of Lelouch. He's good with words and uses his Gios to get people to do what he wants. He's the same age as Lelouch, but has honed his Gios for much longer, and has gotten to the point that he's consumed by it. While it's difficult to imagine what this would look like if Lelouch was consumed by his power besides maybe some sort of Purple Man light situation, the thought clearly rattles him. He's quick to berate C2 for having abandoned Mao without taking his Gios or killing him, leaving him to his tortured existence. C2 decides to leave, endeavoring to find Mao on her own, since she's the one he's looking for. She tries to find him by interrogating random people, until ultimately she realizes that her best chance at finding him is by allowing him to find her, which she does by returning to Lelouch, knowing that Mao would be in Gios range, and she goes to deal with him by herself. She feels a sort of responsibility for Mao, in part brought on by Lelouch's words, but that's a topic for another video. In the episode where Mao makes his first appearance, C2 offhandedly says to Lelouch that if you have something you don't want to lose, you should keep it at a distance. She was talking about Mao. She claims to have left him because he couldn't fulfill his side of the contract, but a Gios as strong as his could reasonably be able to grant her wish, which implies that it was simply that he was unwilling to do so. I think that part of the reason that she left was that his dependence on her didn't bode well. Lelouch often treats C2 as an annoyance, but ultimately he never seems entirely willing to part with her. When she announces her plan to leave Lelouch to go with Mao, he's clearly hurt. He accuses her of betraying him by leaving, and even tries to cast Gios on her even though he knows it won't work. He claims that she knows too much to allow her to leave, but he could just as easily command her to keep his secrets. However, he attempts to order her to stay by his side. This is the one time he tries to use Gios on her, and he urges her not to leave him. This is probably due to the soreness he feels from being forced to cast Gios on Shirley to make her forget about him. He doesn't want to lose anyone else especially the person closest to him, which at this point is C2, despite their awkward relationship. During this interaction, C2 claims that Lelouch is beginning to sound like Mao. Like Mao, Lelouch has grown attached to C2. Mao has made it clear that he doesn't want to live without C2, but it's also clear that his Gios has driven him mad. He seems to have no regard for the lives of people around him, and thinks that the ideal world would be one with no people beside himself and C2. It's revealed that C2 is partially at fault for this attachment. There's an audio flashback to a series of lines of dialogue C2 delivered to Mao, telling him that since she's the only one who's thought he can't hear, he can only be happy with her, and claiming that she'll never leave him. Considering that her ultimate goal is for Mao to become strong enough to kill her, this is a blatant lie, and these lines of dialogue seem manipulative with that in mind. Mao's clearly angry about C2 breaking that promise and abandoning him, as demonstrated by his eagerness to hurt her, including this scene where Mao threatens to literally chop her to pieces with a chainsaw and stuff her in a suitcase. Also, I love this frame where a sign that Mao chops in half falls onto the floor, because the sign itself reads, hold on to small children. It's it's ambiguous whether Mao read the sign or not before swinging the chainsaw, but the allusion to his relationship with C2 is still there. It's in part because she made her connection with him when he was so young, and in part because she broke that connection with him before he had matured that he turned into this sociopathic murderer. Mao's resentment towards C2 for leaving him is thinly veiled beneath the excitement that he displays every time he sees her, because ultimately, more than he wants to hurt her, he just wants to be with her like he was when he was young, before she left. This is a dangerous combination. He desires a quiet life alone with the person he becomes obsessed with. And not only is he willing to hurt her to reach that goal, but he's happy to do so as revenge for the torment that she's caused him. Mao's psychosis is his biggest threat because it makes him impossible to reason with. He believes beyond a doubt that C2 loves him, and so he'll stop at nothing to be with her. However, the delusion also makes him vulnerable, and it's ultimately the weapon that Lelouch uses to allow him to attack Mao at Clovis Land. Mao also presents a strain on Lelouch's relationship with C2, because the lengths C2 is willing to go to are presented to Lelouch for the first time. He's still unaware of her wish, but he knows that she was willing to abandon Mao for failing to meet that wish. 
He makes it a point to promise her that he'll bend the Gios to his will, and make her wish come true. Still, I have no doubt that the awareness of how she abandoned Mao with the curse of Gios is not lost on Lelouch. Mao serves as a cautionary tale for, and a great foil to, Lelouch. And he provides some great insight for C2's personality all at once. In the very first episode, we hear C2 claim that the power of Gios will isolate you. And that warning makes a lot more sense given the context that Mao provides, as he's someone who literally cannot form relationships with people because of his overwhelming Gios. He also foreshadows the arc that Lelouch's relationship with C2 follows, as one that begins with her simply trying to use him to grant her wish, but one that evolves over time as she begins to care about him. Granted, in Lelouch's case, the ending is much less traumatizing, but it is a similar arc. At the same time, he's the type of opponent that Lelouch can never beat on his own, because he takes advantage of other people's thoughts, and Lelouch fights with his mind. Lelouch fears becoming like Mao and being lost to Gios, but that's the risk he takes as he uses his Gios more and more, and his Gios becomes more and more powerful. There's no greater proof of this than the moment when Lelouch finally realizes that his Gios had evolved to the point where he was unable to turn it off. His first thought is, I've become like Mao. However, we as a viewer know that Lelouch doesn't need to fear becoming Mao. While Mao is desperately in love with C2 and is totally fixated on her, Lelouch has other people that he cares for even more than C2, and a goal totally removed from Gios that he is primarily pursuing. This is a significant difference, because while Mao, for the sake of C2, precisely honed his Gios power to please the one person who ever cared for him, Lelouch is already mature enough to have other things going on in his life. If Mao had ambitions that he used his Gios to achieve, rather than having the ambition to become a stronger Gios user, he wouldn't have gotten lost as he did, and he wouldn't have become the man that he has due to C2 leaving him. In terms of their actual journeys as Gios users, Mao's progression actually much more closely resembles C2's than Lelouch's. They both started off as extremely young orphans who had no one to take care of them. They both matured their Gios to the stage where it was always active and showed him both eyes. And they both had a unique relationship with the person who gave them their Gios because everyone else around them was always being affected by it. C2 was probably aware of these similarities and decided to leave Mao and she probably could have forced him to take her code, just like the nun once did to her years ago. She had grown to care for Mao too much, or fear him too much, or some combination of the two, and she knew that he'd be far too unstable without her, so she felt it was better to leave him alone than to leave him alone in Immortal. This video has been more straightforward analysis than I usually do. I usually include an academic philosophy tie-in, or a comparison to some other form of media in my videos. But if you think this video is worth doing, and you maybe like to see some in a similar fashion done for other Code Geass characters, or perhaps one about how Lelouch convinced C2 to live, please let me know in the comments, as I'm more than willing to take a closer look at this show.